Hey guys, Columbus Models here, and we are back with a brand new video. This time, we're going to be building a 72nd scale version of the Polykarkov I-16, a tubby little Soviet fighter, which is one of my favourite aircraft. Don't know why, I just like the look of it. So the one we have here is for the Finnish Air Force, one of the few variants that have been captured by the Finns and used as a test bed. So for this one, it's going to be a what if of if they turn them and use them against the Soviets. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different with this one. Um, we're going to go with a black and green summer camouflage, which has had a whitewash paint put over the top. And as you can see with whitewash, it usually starts fading away because it's a, not a good quality paint. It's just something done in the field. So we're going to try something a little bit new. I haven't whitewashed an aircraft before. I've done a tank, but I've never done an aircraft, so this is going to be a complete guesswork. The I-16 was a small little aircraft which held the record for world's first low-wing cantilever monoplane with retractable landing gear that was to attain operational status. A little bit of an achievement for the Soviets. During the Winter War, the Finnish captured about six I-16s, as well as a load of I-15s, and two of them were put back into flying condition for flight testing. Only this time we're going to do a what-if scenario and they actually use them. The I-16 was actually slight more, slightly more maneuverable than early BF-109s and the pilots of I-16s actually liked them so much that they needed a bit of convincing to actually change over to more modern aircraft. You'll also notice it has an open cockpit which seems a bit weird for places that have such extreme winters. The only uh, info I can find about that is it not fogging up the canopy really. You weren't in an enclosed space with heating or anything so you had a nice exposed everything was cold canopy so you didn't have anything fog up. The only other uh, thing I can think of that would be a good thing is if you did get hit you didn't have a canopy to try and open. You just undid your seat belt and jumped out straight away. You didn't have anything in your way so I guess that's a good thing towards an open canopy. Now I, there have been a few interesting stories I've read about the I-16, one of them being that several pilots actually ran out of ammo mid-battle and decided to do the ultimate and rammed their I-16s into enemy uh, aircraft, which is a little bit extreme, you know, but hey, gotta do what you gotta do. There are a few other countries that also use the I-16, most notably the Spanish during the Spanish Civil War, that would be both sides, nationalists and republicans and also the Chinese against the Japanese. So with the history out the way, let's get on with the build shall we? So we start the build off with building the cockpit. This one just calls for a simple grey everything inside so just using a thin brush and Tamiya enamel paint. For cockpits and whatnot I prefer using a paintbrush over an airbrush. It's just a bit more economical for me otherwise I have to spend a bit of time actually setting up the airbrush and it's just not worth the time sometimes. One thing I will say about 1 to 70 second scale cockpits is they are very simplistic um, which when you're learning is very handy but now that I'm starting to... So here we're just painting the engine just uh, my good old favorite time yet gunmetal. So doing a lot of painting here for something that's going to be mostly covered up but Oh well. Also just doing the decal for the cockpit. I only recently started doing these but I figured well why not I gotta learn somehow don't I. And now we're just putting the fuselage together. The fit was actually pretty pretty good actually. I was quite impressed with this kit, especially with the wings, although contrary to uh, what you see here, I didn't actually have a lot of difficulty putting them on. I just like to make things look difficult. You gotta have a bit of drama in your life, don't you? When it came to putting the fuselage onto the wings, you will notice two rather large gaps along the top of the wings. Yeah, they were pretty, they were a bit too obvious, couldn't really hide them, so I had to get the Tamiya putty out and fill them in. I'm not really into it, but it was just literally just too big. Too, too big to hide, so we had to get the putty out.
as you can see here, nice and scraped and smooth. Just putting the tail fins on and hoping to hell I actually make them nice and straight, 90 degrees to each other. As you can see here, small adjustments and we are good to go. Now it's time to get the painting. So starting with Mr. Surfacer 1000, thinned down quite a bit. Again, very impressed with this primer. Having a lot of, a lot of success with it versus a few other primers that I've used. And I will say I'm still learning filming and all that, so bear with me on some areas. So now we're going to do a black undercoat. It's going to go over the entire aircraft nice and thin down so you get a nice even coat of black all over the plane. Now that the black is done, we're going to add some green to this. The green that I'm going for is a mixture of Japanese navy green, flat yellow and white. Just found that the Japanese navy green was just way too dark for what I, want, what I wanted against a black background, so just tried to lighten it up into something a bit more vibrant, although I probably could have done a little, with a little bit more vibrancy, but oh well. It's going to be covered in a whitewash, so I only just wanted hints of different coloured camo underneath it. So for this model I am using entirely Tamiya enamel paints. I just find the enamel can be really thinned down a lot and still quite usable and it's very good for high detail work whereas the, the normal roof made up acrylics they use just aren't the best for high detail small surfaces. They're uh, much more suited for larger tanks than small aircraft. Underneath the aircraft I went for just a Tamiya light grey undercoat. Now, my go-to for doing a whitewash. Bear in mind I've only ever done this once on a tank, so I'm just using the same principles here. We coat the entire model in a couple coats of matte varnish and then give a liberal coating of an enamel white, this one being just Tamiya white. Then using a clean paintbrush with lacquer thinner, we then go through on all edges and basically do chipping same way as on a tank, just removing any areas that the weak field modded paint would come off easily, hinges, edges of wings. So the main idea is to try and keep the chipping and weathering as random as possible. As humans we have a tendency to try and make everything symmetrical and nice and patterned and organized but that doesn't really happen in real life so just trying everything, just trying the best you can to make everything as random as possible is the key to trying to make it more natural looking. Running along the leading edge of the wings now, this is the place where most of the whitewash would be taken off due to buffeting from wind when it's flying and stuff like that. So just trying to make the weathering as logical as possible. So this is the model after a first initial pass. Decided I was going to go and give it a second pass with the lacquer thinner. I really wanted to bring the colours from underneath whitewash into a more light, bring it, make it a bit more visible to show there is actually a multicoloured camo underneath the whitewash. So just trying to get the green and black to show through as much as possible, but show, still showing the whitewash effects.
So just applying the decals to the aircraft. So back during the Second World War, the Finnish Air Force actually used blue swastikas for their wing and fuselage insignias. However, this kit didn't include the swastikas. They just provided these blue crosses instead. So the last thing I'm going to do to the model is just do a heavy wash and filter all over the entire aircraft using thinned out and oil paints. I'm still learning on weathering aircraft. My go-to is usually weathering tanks, but aircraft I'm not too hot on, so I'm currently practicing on a model that won't be included in the channel just as a, well, just as a test really and experimentation. So for now we're just going to stick with an all over dark brown oil wash just to make it look like it's been used out in the field. And so, my very first whitewashed aircraft. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I can't wait to see you guys on the next video, where we'll be building a turreted single-engine fighter. That's going to be a lot of fun. But until then, I'll leave you with a rather dramatic ending to this video, because why not? I was having a bit of fun with it.